Welcome into the Bruce Arians Show. Casey Phillips here with head coach Bruce Arians. Uh, quite an uncharacteristic start for both teams for that game. I mean, I think it was the fourth drive of the game before somebody got a first down. Uh, five drives combined before you know you got five punts. What do you think led to that on, on these two very explosive offenses for it to take a little while for everybody to get warmed up? Yeah, for us it was uh, penalties. You know, um, we have a third and a foot, and we we jump off sides and. And then don't make a throw and a catch, and uh, we got good pressure on them. Uh, they had some guys open and and missed it. And uh, then as the game, everybody kind of got settled in. You know, uh, they continued to make the throws and catches. We didn't. I know there was a point last season where you felt like a lot of different things started clicking. Whether it was the you know decreasing the penalties or the offense starting to click. Do you feel like some of the issues at the start of this season? You're having to go back to those same things that you felt like needed to start clicking at the end of last year. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the things we talked about in our team meeting is, uh, you know, with 30 guys coming back, you wouldn't think you'd have to remind them that Bucks beating Bucks is harder than beating other teams. You know, you, you have no chance when you're when you're leading the league in penalties. Uh, we did a better job of protecting the football. We're still not taking it away, and uh, so. It makes it so much harder. And we had interception. We had a fumble in that first drive right in our hands. And we had to make those plays. They're simple plays to make. And uh, we didn't we didn't get it done in this one. And I know now the Rams are, I believe, 40-0 and 0, uh, when leading at halftime under Sean McVay. What does he do so well to maintain leads? Because it, it just felt like you guys were having to kind of chase most of the game, and I'm sure that meant you didn't get to do what you really wanted to do. Yeah, well, they, they did a good job scoring right before the half. We had a chance. We don't make the right play and have to kick a 55-yarder instead of a 50-yarder. And don't, don't those three points would have been would have been big, just momentum-wise, going in a half, because it was such a great drive. Uh, and then they scored the first third down and uh, busted. We don't technically bust the coverage, but we technically busted the coverage <laughs> right. uh, the way we played it and give up a 75-yard touchdown. Now you're playing from behind the game plan. At a, on the road, sometimes it ends up in a passing game all the way. And that, those those critical plays early, and then that first third down in the second half was pretty much the game. Right, and no points for you guys in the first quarter. It was the first quarter of the season that you haven't scored in. Uh, what did you see from Raheem Morris and what he's done with that defense? We already knew a lot about some of the personnel that they had, but to go against that defense led by him, what do you think he's done so well with them? Yeah, they're good players. They got a really good team, and. Uh, they play good team defense, but it was more of us not making plays. We had balls off our fingertips. They caught theirs. And, uh, you know, we just didn't make the throws and catches that they were making, but the opportunities were there. It wasn't really what they were doing defensively. It's what we weren't doing. Mm. And offensively, uh, Brady hit that 80,000 career passing yard thing. Every week there's some number that mm -hmm. attributes to him that is absurd. Uh, but in this game in particular, 432 passing yards, uh, ties for the fifth, fifth most in a single game in his career. So even looking at what a massive career that is when you're you're having him beating some of his own records and up there, what did you see that worked well? I know that sometimes those passing yards it's because you are chasing, so it's not ideal. But his game, his his play overall, what did you see? Yeah, I think it could have been better. It could have been a lot better early in the first quarter. Just, you know, we don't usually miss Gronk. And we had balls going off fingertips with him, um, with Tyler. Big third down plays that, that we have been making up to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get behind, you throw it 55 times, and I would expect Tom to throw for 400 yards. You know, right. and, uh, that line did a good job, mostly overall. Back's got to do a little bit better job in protection. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's an amazing guy. And, uh, you know, when we protect him and, and we can play legitimate football, not come from behind all the time, it, it can be really a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was going to ask about that protection because, I mean, we had talked about an Aaron Donald led. You know, team, and uh, that they're they're a tough group to protect Brady from, and um, you know he did go down a few times, get hit a few times. What was your thought on the protection and how you guys handled Aaron Donald specifically, and then just overall the protection of Brady? What worked and what didn't? Yeah, I, I thought we handled Aaron pretty well, and uh, I mean he he can take over a game by himself, and he was he was trying everybody. He was on the right guard, left guard, right tackle, left. He was everywhere, and the guys knew where he was. They took care of him, and. Uh, but we, we struggled with Young, the linebacker. I mean, he beat our backs. He you know came on a blitz one time. We didn't pick it up. Uh, so those type of things are that's us beating ourselves again. And uh, not I got to give them credit too. But uh, we should be able to block those guys. 
And what was it like trying to account for the loss of Antonio Brown? Um, you know, at least you did have a few days to prepare for that. But what were the ways that you tried to make up for that? Was it a, hey, this one person, you're going to step in for him or versus a, a committee? And, and how did you think the offense stepped up in his wake? Yeah, I think uh, Scotty and, and Ty, Tyler had probably his best game ever. And just given opportunities, he's going to make plays. It's a, he's a heck of a player. So and he's not A.B., but A.B. Uh, with Scotty, we didn't get the deep ball. They were not going to give us anything deep. And uh, so it was uh, for him, it was a little bit tougher game. But for, for Tyler, uh, I thought he, he played outstanding. And hopefully we'll get A.B. back this week. Yeah, when it comes to Tyler, is it just, I mean, I feel like every week we're talking about the idea that there are just so many weapons, it's so hard to get everybody on the field, but has Tyler shown you that maybe you need to start trying to make those things happen to get him out there, that he does make some big plays, or where does he stand in, in that idea of just taking what's given to him versus kind of almost making you put him on the field at times? Yeah, I mean, we, we try to get him out there some, uh, even when AB's playing, and uh, certain packages, because he is a great blocker like Chris, and uh, and that sets up some good play action for him. But, uh, you know, if, if you got Tyler out there, A.B. sitting. So it's, it's, a, it's a good problem to have, that's yes. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And Godwin uh, rushing touchdown. That's a thing that we've never said before, that he's never said before. That felt like the kind of play that is an A.B. play a lot of times. Typically, if you've had a wide receiver coming out of the backfield like that, it's been him. Was that kind of a substitute for what would have been A.B.? Or was that a thing dialed up for Chris all No, that was Chris all the way. Chris is probably the best runner as that we have ball after in his hands like he's a great screen runner uh he made a great cut sharp cut you know fast guys would run right past that hole and chris is fast but he he can really put his foot in the ground and change directions it was a great play by him and mike evans over 100 yards uh i mean when you're going against jalen ramsey some of the time that's that's a heck of a uh, in that defense overall it's a heck of a defense to have over 100 yards in what worked well for mike yeah, just he ran great routes, and uh, you know, and he put some deep, deep out routes and deep stops, and uh, good protection on those plays. And uh, you know, I, he had Jalen Ramsey beat, and they, they tangled feet right when the ball was coming down, and that's always a tough one. I thought it was pi, but uh, you know, they're not going to call that one. As far as the run game, I think it is safe to say that when Tom Brady is your leading rusher, things didn't go according to plan. Uh, so, how much of the Lack of production on the run game was situational of you guys were having to play a little bit from behind. How much was the effectiveness of the run game itself, run blocking, those guys trying to kind of paint us a picture of what, what led to Tom Brady being your, your leading rusher? Yeah, just poor poor performance up front uh, and the runners uh, early in the game. We, did, we just we didn't run the ball well at all. And then as we got behind, it was like, let's don't waste it down. Um, you know, we did some screens and some things that are, we consider a running game, just get the ball out and, and on the perimeter. But uh, no, it, it, uh, it's got something we got to pick up uh, and get better at quickly. The runners have to run better and the blockers got to block better. But uh, and again, I don't like throwing the ball 55 times, but this game kind of dictated it. What are some of the ways that you think that you guys will be able to make progress in that area? Because it's it's one of those where, of course, we know it's not what you wanted. So what are some of the things that maybe you can work on or, or work to change to, to make some more productivity in that area? Yeah, I think just going back and look at what has been successful in the past, uh, what new things we're looking at and trying to iron out, uh, let's just maybe get rid of it and uh, do the things that we know we can do. All right, well, we have more coming up here with head coach Bruce Arians on that Rams game and looking forward to the Patriots game as well. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bruce Arians Show. Casey Phillips here with head coach Bruce Arians. Uh, let's talk about the special teams a little bit. Uh, I know Bradley Pinion had had such a great start to the season. A uh, couple punts I'm sure he would love to have back in that game. Have you been able to catch up with him to figure out kind of what happened there? What did you see from the, the punt game? Yeah, it was a very poor job. And um, and like I said, Bradley's been playing great. Uh, we Something you would never expect, you know, a 15-yarder and a hook 30 down the middle. Uh, thank God we covered it really, really well. But it, it gave them too much great field position, and uh, it's, not so, it's not acceptable. He's too good a player to have a game like that. And I know Jalen Darden getting his first action in wake of uh, Mickens being injured. What did you see from him in terms of his attempts in the return game? And then he even got in there as a wide receiver some. Yeah, I thought he handled the ball uh, really, really well as far as punting game and, and the kickoff return. He stretched it pretty good. He, there's a, there's a, just learn to hit it. It's a little different speed than preseason when you're playing against the really good guys. And uh, he had a chance to really hit one on a, on a kickoff return and he ran all the way around the corner. But uh, I thought he handled the ball well. 
uh, receiver wise, he's still got a ways to go. Yeah, <laughs> we could, I mean, he's got a lot of lot of people to, yeah. to show him the ropes and in that room. He's got time. He's got time to get better. Yes, and uh, we had talked about that new stadium. I know that um, this was the first time essentially this this group of guys all together went on a road game that was a full stadium. And uh, from what it sounds like, that was a heck of a stadium to be full. That how did you see the noise affecting it, and how did you feel like the team handled that in terms of the momentum or pre snap penalties, all of that? Yeah, and, and we work so hard against noise. I mean, the, the noise we have in practice, there's no, no stadium to allow. And uh, we blare the speakers right up behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, so they're not acceptable, um, especially for a wide receiver to jump off sides. Um, I can understand what happened on the first one, but again, even that's not acceptable. Um, we overcoached it a little bit on the first one. And uh, just we have to eliminate those penalties. And, and it is a beautiful stadium. Uh, fantastic because when nothing's going on it's still really loud uh, I don't know if everybody noticed it but me but when nothing was going on there was a real loud hum in that stadium mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's a it's a very unique place to play that's for sure and how did you think the team handled the the travel to the West Coast I know it's again a little different than you typically handle it in a non-COVID year where you went much later were you happy with that decision or how did you feel like that worked for you guys schedule wise yeah, I thought the schedule, everything was fine as far as getting there, getting plenty of rest and uh, getting up and playing. And just we, we just got to play better. All right. Well, we still have plenty more coming up with head coach Bruce Arians here talking about the Rams game and looking forward to the Patriots game. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Bruce Arians Show. Casey Phillips here with head coach Bruce Arians. Uh, we had talked about Matthew Stafford and the addition he was to that team. I mean, he ended up going 16 for 24 for 223 yards, three touchdowns, just a minute into the second half. I mean, he even after that whole first quarter being a slow start for that team. So what did you see that he was doing so well and, and what he has added to that offense? Well, they were doing a great job of getting guys open, and, and he doesn't miss them. You know, that's one thing about Matt. He's a tremendously gifted passer. And, uh, you know, we hit him a few times, not enough. We got, we got our, our pass rush has got to get better. And, uh, but if you give him time, he's going to find him, even the ball way down the field. We had a great rush. He finds Deshaun Jackson, and, and it's a touchdown. So you cannot give him anything, and, uh, or he'll beat you just like he did us. Yeah, and Deshaun Jackson, 75-yard touchdown, another 42-yard game. Uh, what was the struggle in the deep balls, those big chunk plays, particularly with him? Yeah, we, he ran a double move and um, we fell down. I mean, it was it was just as simple as that. We just technically blew the coverage. I mean, uh, didn't play our technique properly, and uh, you know the the other one was the same thing. And um, it wasn't like he just went out whipped somebody one on one. I mean, we have double coverage on both those, and uh, we just not do our job. And Cooper Cup, uh, just proving he is definitely one of the better wide receivers in the league. You know, nine catches for 96 yards and two touchdowns. What makes him that talented? And I think maybe is one of the more underrated guys at that position. Yeah, if he's only underrated in the national media because the and NFL players they know Cooper Cup. He's a tough tackle. He's a hell of a receiver. He's got great hands and and he can really run. I mean. They do a good job of scheming. He's a heck of a slot, but he can play outside also. And, uh, you know, we, we did a poor job in the red zone of, of matching up our coverages and, uh, again, busted something that we, we should have never busted and gave him an easy one. And I know third down, getting off the field is something that you guys really take pride in. And uh, this game, I know that was not where you wanted it to be, that um, it was the most third down conversion since you and, and Todd Bowles got here. And at one point, I think they had a streak where they, they went eight for eight on third down conversions. What particularly in those scenarios did you see was a struggle for our defense in that game? No pass rush. Biggest thing was no pass rush. And uh, even when we sent somebody, uh, we didn't cover them. But we covered them, we didn't get a pass rush. So uh, we're not cohesive right now defensively between the rush and the secondary. And it's something that we're really gonna have to work on quickly because you know every week's another good challenge. Where everybody's got a good quarterback, so you know we're, we're going to try to uh, to get back to basics and uh, and get it corrected. I think the most commonly used phrase in the NFL might be "next man up," uh, and so I know that injuries are never something you guys use as an excuse or say as a reason for anything. But of course, you know they are a factor. So looking at that secondary in particular right now, you already were without Sean Murphy Bunting. Jamel Dean goes down. 
Um, you're having to bring D Delaney in for just a, a lot more snaps than he had been a part of before. So what did you see from the way they handled those injuries, but how those injuries did end up affecting what the secondary is able to do? Uh, yeah, D Delaney played actually pretty good, really good. He got he got picked one time on a, an illegal pick, but he he was playing his technique good on Cooper Cup's one long one. But uh, I thought D played really good for for being thrown into the fire like that. And I thought Ross Cockrell really bounced back and had a heck of a ball game. It's the rest of the guys that uh, didn't do their jobs as good as they can do it. And what do you think is going to be the move going forward to shore up some of that amongst them and then even the communication that you mentioned with the pass rush? What are going to be the, the tangible things you guys are working on in practice and talking to them about in meetings? Yeah, just the same thing. Technique, technique, technique. Just do your job. We don't need heroes. Just everybody do your job. I thought Joe tried went out and did a heck of a job. His first first game with a bunch of snaps. I got a lot of pressures and uh, but finish it. We got to finish it. Get the quarterback on the ground. Uh, and when, when we have dead blank interceptions, catch them. Yeah, I, was, I had a feeling that that play was not your favorite of, of the game. That, and then we did have the uh, forced fumble by Jordan Whitehead. They ended up recovering it instead of the Bucks. But uh, I didn't know what your thought was on Whitehead. We talked about him still needing to knock a little of that rust off before this game since he'd been out so long. Do you feel like he did that? Was that, that was a very Jordan Whitehead play, I felt like, to, to see the, the old Jordan Whitehead back. Yeah, that was a really good play by him. And the ball seemed like it laid on the ground forever, and we just didn't get it. And, uh, you know, we, if we're hustling harder, playing harder, we'll get that ball. And for you guys, going into this game, I know you had the, the most points off takeaways and the third most takeaways in the NFL from 2019 to this before that game. Um, how have you felt so far about the opportunities to have those takeaways? I know, again, you, you felt like there should have been two in that game on Sunday. Overall, these first three games, what have you seen of what the team could do better or has already done well in terms of trying to continue that streak of being a team that can take it away and capitalize that a lot? Yeah, I think the takeaways, they kind of come in bunches. All you got to do is catch them. You know, catch him and hustle and get to the ball when it's on the ground. But, you know, that pass rush of ours has led to a lot of those takeaways in the past where quarterbacks have to put it up quicker. And that happened early in the game. You know, there were guys open, but we had pressure on the quarterback and Matt couldn't hit him. You know, Devin had a good pressure. Joe had a good pressure. And all of a sudden, it's incomplete, incomplete. Well, that has to be there on a consistent basis. All right. Well, we have one more segment coming up here with head coach Bruce Arians. So we'll be right back. It's time for our final segment here with head coach Bruce Arians and this game coming up this next week against the Patriots. I feel like it might be the most hyped up regular season game in the history of the NFL at this point. So as a head coach, when you know that, and of course it's one thing to just say, oh, we don't pay attention to the outside noise, but how do you make sure that is being communicated to the team, that that's not just something being said, but is actually how guys are carrying themselves throughout this next week? Yeah, I think for the 95% of the guys, uh, it's not that big. But for, for two of them, it really is. And, uh, and that's where all the hype's going to go. I, they can handle it. They're pros. You know, the rest of the guys, they're not going to get hounded by the press. Or not gonna, they're not even going to be mentioned. So it's just a normal week of work and let the national media do everything they want to do to build up the game for, for Tom and Rob and, uh, and see where it goes. And of course, this Patriots team is a very different looking one than, than the other matchups you would have had against them in the past. But one thing that is the same is Bill Belichick. So when you're coaching against a guy like that, what do you tend to focus on and what do you know he will bring to that game, no matter who's at quarterback, no matter what else has changed about that team? They're going to be superly well prepared and you have to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. And uh, that's one thing we got to quit doing if we expect to go up there and win. And what do you see in terms of the weapons that they do now have, that this, this new look uh, Patriots offense in particular, what stands out to you? Well, they got great tight ends now. they got receivers who can really run and uh, some guys that can take the top off. And, and Mac Jones is a very, very accurate quarterback. Uh, they did have some injuries in the running back room, but uh, you know they can run the football. We expect them to try to run the football and protect the young quarterback. And if we can get that shut down and get him throwing the ball a bunch, I like our chances. And then on the other side of the ball, their defense definitely have some, some potent names, particularly the linebacker position. What do you feel like they do really well and that we're going to have to look at from the offensive side? They do a great job of having a bunch of similar type body types at linebacker who can drop, who can rush, and they put them all out there. And it's very confusing at times for the offense who's got who. And uh, it'll be a hard job for our coaches, but they'll get it done to make sure that we can simplify our pass protections 
and not be turning people loose. Well, thanks as always, Coach, and good luck this next week against the Patriots. Thank you. All right, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.